Hello, I'm Tomas Wittelsbach, and I'm going to show you a technique I use to retain my obsessive detail into printing. And so, if you don't know me, I'm fairly well known for making stuff that has obsessive detail in jewelry. And before the last couple of releases, it was really a, a task to try to retain the really, really, really tiny detail that I wanted to keep in certain areas while still retaining a small model size so it can go out to print. Here is the model that I'm going to show you. This is a beetle head from a bracelet that I made. And as you'll notice, when I talk about detail, I'm talking about X, Y detail, not Z detail in the Z axis detail in the printer. You can have a printer that's like two microns on the Z axis, but if it's X, Y, 100 microns, that's a pretty big thing, and you're not going to get surface detail. When I talk about surface detail, I'm talking about this stuff. It's all this minute, like this area right here. Like a lot of this would go away because it doesn't have the resolution to retain this. So that's why some of the printers are a lot better. Most of the good printers are 25 microns, and this will be retained in a 25 micron print. So let's just take this area for example. I decimated this down to 150,000 polys. And you can see that, you know, from back here, you'll, you'll, from back here, you'll get something, but it's not what I want. So the first thing I do is I decimate down to a very low number because we're going to be adding geometry back in where we want it. Next thing we do, we turn on Sculptress Pro and we turn on the history brush. Okay. It's very important, and this is, otherwise you're going to be like, oh, how do I get to my history state? I just want to make it very clear. Bef we're at our 250,000 polys. We're going to come back to our main beetle head that's full resolution. I'm going to come in here and see our little orange square here. I'm going to hold down control, and I'm going to touch that square. See how that becomes a white block? So even if I move forward in our history, you can see, or in our, um, our undo history, you can see right there that there's the little white square. That white square marks your history state. No matter how many times you continue to work on this, that's always going to stay there until you can come back to it. Hold down control and tap it and turn it off. So you can see it's orange. Turn it on. White block. Turn it off. We want it on. Boop. We're going to come back to this guy. Come over here. Turn on Sculptress Pro. I sit there and scrub on that all day with the history brush, and it's not going to work. Turn on our history brush. And you can see that we start to sharpen this up. It's bringing back a little resolution. All right, let's turn this on, see it. Make our brush smaller. Oops. And it brings back more resolution. And then if we want it more, make it smaller. And you can see that it's gonna assign those really nice, sharp, crispy detail. We can bring it right back and in. For those of you who are not familiar with um, Sculptures Pro, how I have mine set up is the size of the brush is the size of the is the size of the mesh that it's going to tessellate. So, as you can see, we're adding geometry back, and you can see how it sort of got smoother there, right? Now I believe this is the brush default, but let me show you where this is at just in case. If we come under our brush menu, come down to Sculptress Pro, see Enable and Use Global. I have this on this way. If we turn Use Global off, you can see Adaptive Size Combined. Now what that allows me to do, and then I'll hit Use Global. So with my settings as such, what this allows is that if, let's come back down to a lower resolution so it becomes very clear. When I come in, that adaptive makes 
the amount of tessellation that happens is based on the size of my brush, thus adaptive. It adapts to the size of my brush. Let's turn this on. Come in here. And you can see with Sculptress in History turned on. We're getting a little bit more detail. You can see we've added geometry. We're getting a little bit more detail by going over this this way. But you can see it's not really great. I'm going to lower my brush size again. And you can see that it sharpens all that up dramatically. And let's go back and look at it here. You can see that we've added geometry. Let's make it smaller. And, yep. Boy, I'm just all over the place today, aren't I? And so you can see that it gets more and more detailed, and I'm going to make it just a little smaller here. So this stuff gets really crispy, sharp. And there you go. You can see that that's darker in there. And I don't know how much more resolution we actually can get out of this. Well, it seems like quite a bit more. And you can see how those edges are actually crisping up pretty dramatically. This is really close in, so it looks pretty rough. But it's not. <laughs> we zoom out, you can see that that's pretty sharp there. So adaptive means that my brush size changes, or the tessellation amount changes with my brush size. And it's right there in Sculptress Pro. So those are my settings, and that allows me a lot of freedom in using Sculptress Pro with history. We shrink our brush down a little, and I come back in, and I add geometry where I need it. And here we're going to switch to this so you can actually see it happen. And I'm just going to, this is, let's say this is the top of the ring. So I really want this area to be visible or this area is very visible. So I want it to be highly detailed. Okay. That's not bad, but I still want some crispness here. So I'm just going to lower my brush a little more and come back in and I'm going to just crisp up these little areas that are just a little soft. And that's just by me adding extra geometry and using the history brush to reapply to the 21 or the 20 million poly model. So you can see, and we've jumped up to 267,000 polys. So you can see you can find those areas that you really want, like, you know, that are the, in direct eye view. And you can really tune those up just by using history and Sculptress at the same time on a decimated model helps. Let's see. Let's say we really want this stuff because this is, you're going to look at the eyes of things. We're trained to look at the eyes of things. So the things around the eyes need to look good. I'm going to bring this up a little more because this isn't super crisp detail. So you can see I'm just kind of sharpening up some of this stuff. And then as I sharpen it up, it's going to show me where I need finer detail. You know, if you have a 50 micron printer, you may not want to take it too far. But I do because I'm crazy that way. And you can see that we just come back in and what was muddy now crisps up. Make it smaller, and you can make it crisp up even more. So all you're doing is you're going in and you're dialing in the detail where you want it. And so you can leave certain areas not done, because you can't just redo the whole model, or you wind up with a 20 million poly model. <laughs> so this is just a very easy way to come in and crisp up the detail before you send it out. And I try to have my target model size about a million polys. I think most, most printers can take a million poly model. And I find that it's just a good universal rule. A million polys is okay. Um, 
So you can see how very quickly we can bring detail back to the focal point and still retain a model that's under a million polys. Obviously, if you try to do the whole thing, you're going to fail. Or you're going to fail at hitting that million poly model. You can get all the detail back. So that is, that's the technique. Decimate, get Sculptress Pro, your history brush on, make your original model, the history state here by holding control. You can see I turned it off and turned it back on. So now everything's going to reproject to this. And um, yeah, I think that's one of the best ways to retain high detail in the areas that are really going to be seen after decimation. All right. Have a great summit.